The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX like we always do. This was before we got that bullish figure on the um, uh, GDP, I guess, uh, only down 4.8%, which is rather bullish. And then we're also going to take a look now at the FTSE. By the way, today we are going to have our friend, Mr. William Meridian, out of... Um, Vienna, Austria. He'll be on and he'll be talking to us about the oil and also gold and stuff. We'll see that what's going on. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Duffy. I love that movie uh, with uh, Robert Duvall. Probably one of the greatest quotes ever. It's like, uh, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Anybody remember the name of that guy? Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Strother Martin. Yes, you're correct. He died in uh, Westlake Village. Um, actually, uh, actually knew the family a little bit, but a really nice fellow. Okay, let's uh, move on to uh, one. We have the bond market, folks. I believe this is going to be the surprise of. Um, well, if you can say there's a surprise anyway, we'll have to be, we have to wait and see. But if you look at this, you'll see that we had a. Um, Let's do the bonds first because I want to be able to get into this right here. Here's the uh, Treasury bonds. Um, we have um, we're we're down a little bit from where we were this morning after the report. It's backed off a little bit, but we've been up to this 61% retracement now for a whole month, folks. That's a lot of supply, and given the fact that the news has been really really bullish with the Fed pumping the the thing, it's really uh, it's really something to uh, to see it do this. So I believe this could be the surprise. But remember, I, I'm just a chartist. I don't really uh, don't know, uh, you know, too much. What to, to to know anything about the fundamentals would be saying something. But I don't know anything about what the Fed is doing. I mean, this is uh, this has changed just about everything, you know. So, but as they say, ancient astronauts theorists say yes this is the way it is so you just move on to, to the next one i posted a chart about the e-mini s p we've now made a 61 percent retracement folks of the whole move down i didn't think that was possible but by golly here it is i don't know what high was but we're looking at 29 24 22 to 26 29 22 to 26 i believe is the exact numbers in there so we'll watch that the russell of course has been uh, really strong these last few days and more buying is coming in. Um, no, I have, uh, David, I actually, it's my, one of my favorite shows. I love to watch that because I've been interested in that since uh, I, before I went to, 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 into college, I, I read a book Paul, um, by Eric Von Daniken. And uh, that was the book that really got me interested. And I've made it one of my bucket list things is to tour of many of those places that I could been. I've been to Tia Tukan. I've been to... Um, uh, the place in Peru, uh, uh, <laughs> Lake Titicaca, and uh, also uh, also I've been to um, the really cool one was uh, down in uh, the Mexican uh, pen uh, Peninsula, uh, where I saw the uh, the Pyramid of the Sun, and I can't remember the name of it now, but uh, that's where I saw that I was there on the September the twenty uh, second when the equinox hits and the 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 shadows of the uh, of the pyramid make a 45 degree angle it looks like a snake going out into the into the ocean it's so perfect that you just you just can't believe that someone could build something like that happens every day chichen itza that's right chicken it's chichen itza that's it. thank you marshall and it's uh, right near um it's just south of Tulum, which is where the uh, the the caves are. That's supposed to be something really cool. But I went down there and had a had three or four days, and I really uh, really enjoyed it. But that was a long time ago, folks. Thirty years. So I've been well been to the Egypt and a few other places. Um, one of the places I want to go someday is to go to Turkey to see Tebeke Tempe, but I haven't been able to do that yet. We will have Bill Meridian as our guest, as I mentioned. And boy, we've got a lot of questions for him. So we'll see. You know how much more this is going. 
going to extend on this rally and we'll move on you know, to the next one and whatever the next one's be. But I'm watching these bonds very, very closely. Uh, the, the To me, the gold still looks very. Someone's asked a question about that. We rallied, went right back to the same tricky area of 1725. That was a 382 of the whole range. We've been up there three times, haven't been able to get above it. If we can get above 1730, then maybe gold could rally a little bit more. But the way it looks right now, it appears that maybe the gold is going to have a little bit of a trouble in here. And silver certainly looks a little bit negative, and, and as does the uh, as does uh, platinum. So we'll see see how this actually uh, moves on as we look at the rest of these today. Now, I do want to tell you a little bit about this. I mentioned these coins the other day. This is the night the the 2020 uh, quarter. And it's got the uh, the two bats, the mother bat and the baby pup. They call them pups uh, from the American Samoa uh, territorial part of the U.S. And uh, this is an actual coin, folks. But boy, if you can find them, good luck. Because I tried, I tried three different banks, and they never even heard of it. And they came out in January, but nobody has them. So I, they either took it off the market, or they, uh, you know, they really didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Well, they they've come out from what from what they've told us, but they're they're just not uh, they're just not available to find them. So we'll see. Okay, we had one other question last night uh, from an email, and this was about the uh, one of the natural gas things that we've been watching for quite some time. And the gentleman had the question um, of taking a look. This was a question that he asked. He wondered if that was a three drive to a bottom pattern, and this is the UNAZ. And uh, I think it's the ETF for that, as I, as I recall. I'm not even sure because I don't. I just know that it's related to natural gas. But the pattern is okay. You see the three red arrows there? That's a one three five pattern, folks. If those if those bottoms were lower, each bottom was lower, then you would have a three drive pattern. But when the bottoms are higher, that's a one three five. That that's the ultimate way of trading in the direction of the trend because you've got a bottom and you're you're trading in a higher trend bottom on on point five, which is the arrow on the far right. That works either upside or downside. So that that's a great way of doing it. You don't have to wait for anything really too exciting. Oh, by the way, I do want to mention those of you that want to hear the master himself tomorrow, Thursday, Tom O'Brien's going to be giving his all day thing. And not only does he know what he's doing, he's incredibly entertaining. So I would highly suggest if you've never heard Tom O'Brien for a long period of time, you should because he's he's really good. And guys, does he know that uh, that you know that uh, gold market. Well, he knows stocks too, but he knows gold markets too. Um, okay, someone's posted it. The bat quarters are available on Amazon. Marshall, you're the man. Hey, Marshall, do me a favor and email me that if you would, please. I'd really like to. I want to get some of those for the grandkids to put them away for them. So we'll see what's going on here. Okay. Um, all righty, let's move up here to uh, one other question that someone had. This is something we need to talk about, folks. We're going to have a meat a problem here for um, uh, pork and beef here pretty soon. You'll notice here, you know, we were looking at that hogs down there uh, a couple weeks ago. You see when they were down in that 42 range, look how high they got, folks. They've jumped 18 cents a pound. They've already started to back off a little bit here, but uh, this is the prelude of a... Uh, some problems in the meat market. Let's take a break here. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back. We have a guest from one of my favorite places, Springfield, Missouri. Bill, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, yeah. Bill, I bought a Thompson submachine gun back in 1964 at a gun show in Springfield, Missouri. It was a U.S. Border Patrol oversupply. I paid $145 for it. Me and my buddy John were there. John still has his, and he's turned down oh. $25,000 for that several times. I sold mine for about 500 But I remember Springfield very well. What can I help you with, my friend? Well, I've listened to you so long, I remember that story probably yeah. five, six, seven, eight years ago. <laughs> well, I tell the same stories no. every day. Fortunately, most people can't remember them. <laughs> well, I'm, eight, I'm 80 years old, so I know that. Yeah, feeling. well, I'm in, no, uh, we're, Larry, we're neck and neck, question, Bubba. We're neck and neck. Yeah, my question is, I have found out that the restaurants, you talked about a shortage of meat, the restaurants consume 50% of all the meat produced that comes in from foreign countries or restaurants, hot dog stands, football yep. stadiums, baseball stadiums, consume 50% of all the meat. And if they haven't been in business, how can we have, I mean, that supply is backing up. That's exactly so what's that's, happening, but I, I you don't know. It's just like the other stuff that you read. You know, what are you going to do? I, It just seems well, like it's I, really strange. I just wanted you to look into it. You have better sources than I well, and see if, I will, if we're going to have a shortage of meat. I talked to my children about it. And they said, Dad, our freezers are full, been full. <laughs> We yeah. don't have a problem. <laughs> well, there's certainly not. Oh, there are no problems here in, in Tucson. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. I've, I've got Rich Anderson looking into it because, you know, he's in that. He has a cattle uh, feeding operation, so he's uh, quite close to that. And then he knows the people at Smithfield where they do pork. But uh, evidently it has to do with the fact that they've slaughtered so many pigs and, and cattle during this down move, you know, just to reduce the feeding costs. And that's going to be out in the future of maybe six to 12 months, well, a little more than that, probably 12 months when we first start to see it. But, you know, you, you never know. I mean, guys. Darn, I, that's why I'm a technician, Bob or Bill. I tell you, I just uh, have a hard time with yeah. these fundamentals. Yeah, well, I was listening to you, like I say, for many years, and I thought, man, that, this got to be corrected because I don't know why there would be a shortage if the restaurants mm -hmm. are not open. They're, they've been closed. Yeah. yeah. 
And the everybody short, that yeah. produces uh, any food at all uh, to be eaten, consumed, why they've all been closed. Yeah, I That's know Rich sure. Anderson. I traveled to South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, mm-hmm. and the cattle bits years ago. And uh, yeah. I'm quite familiar with Rich's projects up that way. Great man. Yes, he is. Listen, we'll we'll be looking at a shortage out in the future, but right now we'll be able to eat good for a while anyway. Yeah, my kid said, Dad, we're not losing any weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bill. Okay. Hey, thanks for thanks Thank for you. calling in and be safe, my friend. You too, sir. You bet. Okay, one of the things that we have going on for us here at the Tiger Den is we've got Mr. Z in there and also David. White and they posted some things about the uh, what the this seriousness of this thing out into the future, which would be very very interesting. But these restaurants, uh, you know, they are in big trouble. There's no there's no question about it. And here's from, you know, Sarah and I when we're usually in normal mode, we eat out probably every day, but uh, or at least six days a week anyway. So anyway, let's move on to uh, one of the things I want to talk about here, folks. That's important for trading, and this is the. Uh, Let's take a look at the crude oil here. Uh, folks, here's where the problem is. This is the June contract. June and July you can uh, are no longer tradable. And if you want to, this is your homework for today, folks. I want you to go back and look at August crude oil and look at December crude oil. Those are the next two with the largest open interest. December is the third largest. It has a, about a quarter of a million contracts outstanding. And this chart doesn't look anything like this. I, I don't even want to post it because it looks so different. But uh, for for your homework, just go look at it because we should run into some pretty strong resistance at $15 in June uh, crude oil. Now, there's the you're not able to trade it, but there are other people that are trading it. So I can tell you that uh, I don't know how they select these, but uh, pay attention to that. I missed crude oil because I enjoy trading it, but the 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 August and the December just are flat untradeable. That's uh, unfortunately that's what it is. Another question that received is about the the um, the July corn. We tried it at. Uh, at 325, we're now trading at uh, under, we're 311, I guess, right now, and we haven't seen any indication of a pattern that would give us a spot to uh, be a buyer. There's something down there around 297, but we're a little a little away from that level. But I'm still got it on my watch list uh, very very closely because of we're looking at. Okay, one other question is how can the stock market rally so much with all this negative news of 30 million people out of work and the GDP dropping and interest rates at zero and stuff like that. Boys and girls, get a book called Only Yesterday, and that'll tell you what happened, because when the stock market bottomed after the crash in 1929 on November the 11th, it rallied from November the 11th until April 1st. It rallied 59.5% into April 1st of 1930, and from 1930 to July 8th of 1932, when the Dow hit 41, I believe, Basil will correct me on that, 41 or 42, uh, it had dropped uh, over 92% of its price, and um, it was down from a high of 383, and it took the market 27 years to take those highs out. So, you know, just because things are doing that way, and that's one of the advantages of, you know, when you're doing technical work, you'll say, I don't know what the hell's happening, but this is what's happening. So you don't have to try to catch a falling knife, folks. You take your shots, find find patterns that you see that are relatively um what do you call uh, identifiable and then just trade what you see that's exactly right you know trade what you see not what you think that's the stuff turning off the news is difficult because of all the stuff that's going on in the world right now and folks you know some of it i let's change the story get off the soapbox there Pesavento. you don't need to talk about that other stuff don't make no difference no no never mind now i've got a really great chart here this uh, confirms what shane has been telling us this comes from um, tom lacall i remember tom when he was just a little shaver his uh, dad sherwin and his mother charlene they ran uh, the uh 
McCullen oscillator, and uh, Tom was taken on. But uh, this shows you from uh, 2000. It shows the uh, uh, the uh, how the M2 is divided. This is what we used to watch all the time, which is the money supply. And this is basically what uh, they're looking at here. And if this is correct, this tells you that uh, you know we could be higher. But remember, this has a bullish bias all along in here. So we'll we'll see if this is going to be uh, the case. Now you see we have not had a big price response yet. But we've come all the way back to our 61% retracement in the S&P. So we'll see if that's going to be uh, pretty much. Um, well, Maria, I don't know. I only eat meat three times a day. I don't do it for snacks. But, you know, golly, I've just never been a person that did like I tried one of those uh, impossible burgers from Burger King. And, boy, they sure named it right. Because it's impossible to make any correlation between that burger and meat. I wouldn't touch that, and I, and I tried it once in Whole Foods. Hey, we've got Bill Meridian coming up at the break, folks. You can stop me from babbling a little bit, and he's going to have some good stuff as usual. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and hold on for about four more minutes, and we'll have Bill Meridian on. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Bill Meridian, Cycles Research, uh, formerly of Vienna, right now uh, residing in New Jersey. Bill, how are you doing? Oh, great, Larry. How are you? Good. I bet you'll be glad to get home, won't you? 
Well, I actually opened up the garden centers there two, three weeks ago so people could buy seeds and plants. And now they're opening <laughs> up. They're starting to do elective surgeries again. Doctor's offices are opening on the oh. first small shops and on the 15th restaurants and cafes. Mm -hmm. You got a notice here that uh, Dell Horoscope has, has come back with the. Uh, uh, no. I thought. Um, well, are we on announcements, page two? Yes, uh huh. What has happened is Dell Horoscope ceased publication after 84 years with the April issue, but the Mountain Astrology, which is another fine publication, has picked up the subscriptions. So they are fulfilling the unfulfilled Dell oh. subscriptions, hoping to pick up um, the Dell readers. And they have uh, mm -hmm. requested my columns. So I'll be uh, writing in there beginning in August. Oh, that's really cool. And also the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. We're going to have Andy uh, Piccoli uh, tomorrow Andy. as our guest. Yeah, uh, he's going to be our guest tomorrow. Pancholi, yep. And Pancholi, that's what I thought I said, but yeah, maybe I, I mispronounced it. I was a member, I was a member for 30-something years, then I was on the board of the Foundation in his previous incarnation. And now it's come back, and I think this is a very good crew. I mean, it's a very talented, professional group, and mm -hmm. uh, I've already... I've already, already written an article about George Lindsay's cultural cycles, and I'm requesting some of my future friends in Europe to contribute articles, so I think it's going to be good. That's very good. Now, you're going to talk to us today about uh, stocks, bonds, and gold. Do you want to take the mic and tell us what you're looking at? Yeah, well, today's perspectives. Stocks, the remainder of the week, we'll see rising prices. Last weekend on Thursday, there was a sharp drop in the American Association of Individual Investors Sentiment Index uh, from 33% bulls to 23%. When you get a 10-point drop in one week, uh, you should do the opposite in the following week. It's a contrary opinion indicator. Mm -hmm. And from May, uh, from April 28th, which was yesterday, to May 6th, that is the optimized end-of-the-month period of strength for uh, the stock market and and the combination of the two is what's pushing the market higher now bonds mm -hmm. as we'll see are in a trading range and gold is still in the same uptrend i expect it to be uh, by the end of the year i expect it to be 2000 over the very short term by about june 1st or so i would expect it to be about 1800 so if we go to the by the way there's it's not all doom and gloom. We're going to see new highs on the next page. Okay, go ahead. There you go. Total cannabis sales through the roof since the since the <laughs> pandemic started. So, if you if you would have bought down there at the what was that down there in December and held now, <clears throat> you'd be in good shape. So to go to the S and P on the next page. On the top, we have the usual weekly cycle. On the bottom, we have the monthly cycle. So the weekly cycle, as you can see, the green went on a buy signal. So we've got that in addition to the drop in the AAII index, which is a contrary indicator, and in addition to the end of the month strength. And if we go down to the monthly, we can see the monthly is a bit weaker consolidating in here. So my guess is the market would be at a trading range or a bit flat uh, in the month of May. You can see the weekly, if you go up, the weekly gives a sell on May 15th. So I think we'll be at a trading range to higher to, into the 15th of the month. Uh, this week's very bullish. Then it, it's going to be a uh, drift higher. But then in the second half of May, I think we have a little pullback. But the uh, uh, monthly cycle does not bottom out uh, after that. It looks strong. So we're in a continued uptrend. And, of course, after looking at the cycles, we now look at uh, cycle confirmations. These are the technical indicators. That, and I already mentioned the first one. Uh, but over the past 10 weeks, bears in the AAI poll have averaged more than 46% of total respondents. That's one of the most uh, persistent streaks. And um, over the past week, it was 10%. But even the uh, moving average uh, appears to be uh, bullish. With It's about 50% bears right now, I think. Now, Here's another contrary indicator. Trend following hedge funds are not perceiving the 20 plus percent rally in stocks as genuine. They do not have much faith in this. Uh, their quant models, I think, probably went bullish. But uh, this is unusual. They have 
they have remained uh, somewhat underweighted or haven't, they haven't increased their positions, their long positions. The hedge fund exposure is still quite low. So the market's going to do, of course, what it always does. It's going to always go in the contrary opinion to make people look wrong or lose the most money until they flip. And as you may recall, when you had me on at the end of the year, this uh, particular index was at a high. They had extremely high exposure. So, and as mentioned in a previous uh, report, if the market has risen by 30% off of a low after a decline of this magnitude, it's measured in terms of the percentage drop over a very short period of time. If you look back at prior similar conditions, if the market rises 30% off the low, then it doesn't go back and test the low. And if we, uh, we've got another, this is, uh, here's another sentiment buy signal. This is the net percent of uh, funds that say they're in of uh, funds that say they're in cash. Wow! This is the uh, that is still quite high. And now I think the important point here is, you know, Elliott Wave. If we're if it's a bear move or a bull move, it's it would be five waves down or five waves up, and the intervening corrections would be three wave affairs ABC. And I think that this market has just completely wiped out the notion of a five wave move. Uh, that low was a C wave way back on, uh, well, wasn't that long ago, was it? March 23rd. So that has uh, heavy implications now. If it's an ABC drop, that means the bull market that started in 09 is really still intact, if you use Elliott Wave theory, which means it should go to a new high which mm -hmm. seems kind of hard to believe, but uh, I was very hesitant when the market uh, rallied back and started to rise as to whether it would be a wave four, uh, uh, it was a wave four rally and we'd get a wave five down, which is what most of the Elliott waivers thought based upon the reports that I read. But my other indicators, such as the ones I've been showing you, remain bullish. So as a result, I think it's just a question of which stocks to own now. And if you go to the next slide, you can see First, we hit a low, then we uh, jumped up, we gapped up there, and we went to 23.6%, which is not very uh, consequential, I think, but then we broke the 30% level. Then it hit the 38.2% level. Now, as my friend um, Tony Plummer in London says, if it goes above 38.2%, that means it's probably reversed. So it, went, it did that quite easily. Then it was 50%. And now today, as I'm talking to you, it is above the 61.8% level. 78.6 uh, is not shown on the graph. That's above that, but I don't think that's consequential here. So I think we're going to new highs, which, of course, nobody expects, because given the fundamental situation. We've never had such a situation. So how does anybody know what the fundamentals look like? That's right. <laughs> that's the understatement. Can you stay with us, Bill? We've got to pay for yeah, your bills. Yeah. You bet. Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. We'll be right back, folks. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, you've got a chart there on the uh, S&P uh, 500 uh, that shows the monthly. Yes, we'll go down to the monthly. And as you can see, look at that uh, trend line I've drawn up from 09. Notice how it got it broke just a little bit below it, and then it recovered. So we may be in a pretty much last gasp rally. You know, yesterday, even though the market was down, that was just the big cap technology stocks that pulled it down because the breadth was quite positive, uh, as was the uh, advanced decline, uh, advancing volume versus declining volume. And today you've got a nice rally. So, so let's go down to bonds. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a, a lot less clear. Uh, notes have remained flat rather than declining which is, uh, you know, March is the single most bearish month. Everything pointed down in March, and they rose anyway due to the extraordinary drop in the stock market. That Those funds had to go somewhere. The breadth line, advanced declines or bond, is quite extended. The weekly cycle falls into mid-May, but the monthly cycle bottoms now. So here's where we have disagreement or conflict between the cycles. The weakest time period in April has passed, so the cycle, cycle situation is less bearish than before. So I think the net result of this conflicting picture is likely to be a trading range in the 139-141 area. So essentially, if bonds hold up, you know, bonds are down in the month of March almost, what, 75, 80 percent of the time? And these cycles pointed down, and yet it still rose. And now when you see that, that was only one month ago. When you see that, you know that there's something bigger at work. It's like one of these giant cycles that the last time it occurred, it wiped the pharaoh out of all his wheat positions in Egypt. And uh, it's just not measurable uh, if with the current technology and price data that we have. So uh, if this market closes higher in April, which apparently it's going to do, the odds of higher bonds in May is 15 and 20. In other words, in uh, 20 years, when the month of April has closed on the upside in 15 of those years. The market's been higher in the next month. So that's why I'm calling for this moderate trading range at 139, 141. Now, if you go down, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Uh, look at the, the bottom chart is the monthly cycle. Uh, you can see it points up until the end of May. And as you can see, the uh, weekly cycle is already pointing down, and it's down until the middle of May. So I'd have to say the second half of May will probably be quite strong. It will muddle through, I think, in the first half. And I've had a lot of questions on gold lately, so let's take a look. That is, of course, the gold seasonality. I always start out with the with the seasonal cycle. And as you can see, 
the months of uh, March bearish, April slightly bullish, May is more bullish. That's where we're headed. And then you'll just note between May and September is the strongest time of the year with August and September being the two best. So that's the backdrop. We're closer to a low seasonally than we are to any sort of a high. So let's look at the weekly and the monthly cycles. Now, the great thing about this market, Larry, is the cycles up to this point have been synchronized. And if we look down, down at the uh, monthly cycle, you'll note we don't get a high up until sometime in November, December. Q1 is usually a weak period. So this agrees with the underlying annual cycle. December has seen more significant drops in gold than any other month. So I think this, this is very reliable. And apparently, the only down month we're going to have, it indicates that August will be down. But remember, August is the second strongest month seasonally. So it may just go sideways. But right now, you can see we are just coming up at the end of the month to a renewed buy signal. So we're probably going to see very strong gold in the month of May. And my guess is you uh, are going to see gold up to uh, 1800 or so. Mm -hmm. And if we go down now to the price chart to try and get some fixes on the price, we can see that big blue rectangle that I drew. As I pointed out last time, that is $300 high. And if you take 300 and add it to the point of breakout at 1550, you get 1850. So I'm being a little conservative at 1800. Mm -hmm. Bill, I have a and um, uh, what does it mean when you say the gold 1969 written on there? What is what is the notation oh, that, for 19? The daily, that means the daily uh, prices begin in 1969. Okay, good. All right, great. Just wanted to make sure. That's back when they used to have the old gold fix, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, did you, I want to ask one other question before we uh, move on here, and that's about oil. Everybody's asking sure. about oil. Well, what's your feeling on this, my friend? Oh, that, yeah, I just put that in Forbes and um, last Sunday. The monthly cycle, which has been very – well, actually, the monthly cycle, uh, the price actually peaked several weeks before the monthly cycle did, way back at the beginning of the year. Now, if the price peaks before the cycle, that tells you, again, it's the uh, great unknown cycle pressing uh, oil down. And I set a target on it of $23 a barrel. That was uh, – People in the Middle East told me I was crazy in the fourth quarter. And when it hit 23, I just used either the Fibonacci numbers or I used prior highs and lows as a guide. Well, below that is 17 and below that is 11 and 7. So mm -hmm. the cycle does not bottom, and I don't know how to reconcile this. In other words, the price objectives have been hit much faster than I thought they would have been, but the cycle does not turn up until October, November. So it is, number one, it's quite possible that the price has bottomed early. And right now, the weekly cycle is pointing up, but that only lasts until about May 13th. So after, after uh, the middle of May, in the second half of May, we should get a renewed down move because the, I've never seen anything like this. The monthly cycle just points straight down from the high earlier in the year. There's not, not even a little move up. So it either has, bought, number one, bottomed early. Number two, the cycle is correct, and gold, uh, oil is going to go to some price like $7 a barrel or so uh, by the autumn. Uh, or it is quite possible that you just have a trade. It's already hit its low, and the monthly cycle will depress it, and it'll just trade in a sideways trading range, which I kind of doubt between now and the autumn. You know, that's uh, five months away. So, uh, I, I meanwhile, I can tell you that it is uh, gloom and doom in the Middle East. And I got an email from a friend down there, and he said, uh, one of the local people, and he said one guy he knows has a travel agency, no money in the bank, no income. He's just getting on a plane, and he's taking off before he gets in any – if you get caught up in the court system there, it's like getting stuck on flypaper. So it is best to abscond. Wow. That's really – well, you can see it in a lot of other different industries and stuff, but to see gold – or see the oil hit $6 and then to go minus uh, 37 I mean, I'd never uh, thought I'd see that. But my gosh, I've been around long enough. I guess I've seen it now. I guess I'll see it again sometime. Do you know, Larry, that 100, 160 or more uh, oil ETFs or oil funds had to undergo some sort of a corporate action. In other words, they uh, two stocks did reverse stock splits. Some funds did reverse stock splits to get their uh, share price up, you know, to some reasonable mm -hmm. amount. Uh, some of them have just folded up, but 160. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
yeah, I know it's really sad to see what's going on over there. Listen, I'm going to let you go because I know you're really busy this morning, but thank you so much. And I certainly oh, want to have you on before you back to Austria. But we have to take a break here in just a second. Could you stay with us till uh, we have sure. a question from someone? And the question I'll is, stay. is uh, after, you, after you left Value Line, uh, how did your career move after you left Value Line, Bill? Okay. You want me to answer that now or later? No, after the break. The break's coming after right break, now. We'll yeah. pay a few bills and then we'll ask to answer that question. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with yes. Bill Meridian. Go ahead, Bill. Could you answer the question of what you did after you sure. left uh, Value Line? Well, first of all, by the when I was working there, Value Line was one of the most highly regarded services, and uh, I worked there for three years, seventy-seven to eighty. And there was so much political infighting. I thought to myself, these guys better straighten out, and they didn't. And the rest of the world passed them by. So uh, I wanted to get. Uh, I had been doing nothing but fundamental analysis from uh, analysis from seventy-two to eighty, and I wanted to do uh, technical work. So I, the next five years, I had two different jobs. I was in institutional sales where the boss man looked at the fundamentals on a macro basis, but he also looked at technicals. And I was a sales guy and I worked as his assistant. And then I left, uh, I left there to pick 
up the job that Bob Colby, the author of uh, the Encyclopedia of Technical Indicators, my old buddy from, he was at Value Line, uh, Indicator Digest, which was a very old, venerable market letter in its uh, last days. And I worked there for two and a half years just to get technical experience. And then I went to Payne Weber, 85 to 88, doing nothing but technical analysis. And uh, that resulted in a layoff after the market crash. But I had already prepared Bill Meridian Cycles Research in the old Astro Analyst program. And uh, I hit the ground with my feet moving. And that led to an introduction to the Arabs. And that led to Abu Dhabi. So that's how it went. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, you you've been around a lot of, a lot of time, and we certainly love having you on here. And thank you for your information. Yeah, I, it's I, been... I didn't realize that. You know, I was seventy one on on Saturday, and I've Happy I've got birthday. friends. Thank you. I've got friends of mine. You know, I'm older than their mothers or fathers. <laughs> Wait wait till your friends start uh, passing on. That's when it gets tough. I wish I was 71 again. Hey, listen, my friend, please uh, be safe over there and, uh, you know, do whatever you need to be to be safe because we sure appreciate your work here and you're certainly a stand up guy. So thank you very much for being on our show. We really appreciate it, Bill. It's always a pleasure, Larry. You bet. Tomorrow we got the cycles, dude, from uh, the UK, Andy Pancoli, and so that'll be fun, and uh, we'll see what happens. So, catch you on the flip side. 